so noise margin now we'll, we'll draw some concepts over here we'll draw some uh, graphs over here that will help us to understand what noise margin is okay so for example if you uh, take this inverter when you take this inverter you provide an input uh, you provide a logic uh, low level input at the uh, uh, you provide a logic low level at the input of the inverter you get a logic high level and conversely when you uh, when you provide a logic high level at the input of the inverter you get a logic low level okay it's very simple basic inverter it's a basic inverter functioning so if we try to plot this particular characteristics of the inverter in a graph this is what we see so for example you have the v out axis over here which is the y axis you have the v in axis which is the x axis okay so what it says is what the what this particular phenomena says when your input is zero your output is high so it says that whenever your input is zero your output will be somewhere over here okay and your, when your input is high which is when your input is high your output is zero so whenever input is over here your output lies somewhere over here so this is from zero to one this is from zero to one okay so let's try to plot that so this this graph says that when your input is zero your output is VDD and as you increase your input go from 0 to positive value of VDD your output comes down to zero voltage so what it says this basically uh, this basically represents the behavior of an inverter and at VDD by 2 at a voltage which is VDD by 2 or which is half the voltage you see a switch happening and that is quite obvious because whenever you switch from high when, whenever you switch your input from 0 to 1 your PMOS and NMOS behaves uh, uh, behaves in a different manner so we'll see that or we have already seen that in some past videos so this is the reason for that you have a VDD by 2 crossing over here so so this let, let me rephrase this graph it says when your input is 0 your output is VDD you move your input from 0 you increase your input from 0 towards VDD by 2 towards VDD and as gradually you, you increase your input voltage your output voltage starts to decrease and finally when your output voltage when your input is at this area your output voltage is completely 0 and that's because your NMOS turns on, PMOS turns off and all those things we have okay so what we'll do is let's let's try to look into this particular area of the curve so this particular area if you see at exactly at VDD by 2 which is the input voltage at VDD by 2 there is a sudden shift from of, of the output voltage from logic 1 to logic 0 and if you try to calculate the slope of this particular area so what is what is slope slope it basically says that the change in the output voltage divided by the change in the input voltage so the change in the output voltage is from VDD to 0 okay but the change in the input voltage is 0 because at this point there is no change in the input voltage exactly at this volt at this particular voltage your output drops from 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 VDD to 0 this says that the slope of this particular line ideally should be infinite so right now we are talking about an ideal case we'll move into a practical scenario as well let's let's look into the ideal case first so ideally it says that it should be having an infinite slope okay so slope is basically dy by dx dy is basically difference in the y axis by the difference in the x axis over here you see the difference in the y axis is vdd minus 0 because it drops from vdd to 0 so the dy the change in the output voltage is vdd the change in the input voltage is 0 because everything happens at this point and as a result of that dy by dx is basically vd upon 0 which is infinite so that's why the slope of this particular curve is infinite so now what we'll do is let's try to look into a more practical scenario over here for example we'll, we'll look into we'll not jump into the exact practical scenario but let, let's look into a more practical scenario over here so what we'll do is we know that the uh, because of because of uh, uh, practical reasons of the, the NMOS and uh, PMOS presents pre, which is present in the inverter are, are nothing but the real devices we have some uh, real resistances and capacitances which are present in the inverter so the curve won't be uh, at VDD by 2 you won't see a infinite slope over here basically you won't see a straight line over here but the line will be somewhat sloping over here okay and this is because they because you have the you have some you have some finite value of resistances and capacitances and hence the output will take some time to to move down from VDD to zero voltage and it won't exactly go to zero voltage again because of the uh, practical scenarios of the NMOS and PMOS so it won't drop exactly to zero but somewhere around zero 
okay so now let's take this particular thing as an example and let's try to let's try to infer some things now if you look the slope over here if you look as calculate the slope of this point it's a finite slope and why it's finite so basically again we'll if we calculate the slope it, it's like change in the output voltage which is from VDD to some voltage which is more than zero divided by change in the input voltage so it's like it's somewhere lies somewhere over here let's say VDD by 4 okay uh, or let's say one fourth of VDD minus three fourth of VDD so it has some value it has some it is not infinite it's a finite slope so basically a, a, a system with a finite slope is what we are looking for because every system has got its own resistances has got its own practical scenarios and as a result of that the output drop will not be will not be instant but it will be a gradual and as a result of that you have a finite slope but this curve still looks more decent isn't it because the reason is it, it we have we have drawn we have taken a, a uh, we have taken a case where the resistances drop in a in a linear fashion the capacitances are all linear and everything we have, we have looked into still we have, we have not entered into a more practical scenario we are somewhere in between ideal and practical so and in, in a practical scenario you have a finite slope that's what we have to take or, or we have to infer from this particular slide so now if you look into this curve there are a few things that are that that we have to infer from this particular curve if you see the input low voltage or if you see a voltage range till which your output voltage remains high it it stops at this point so basically till your input voltage is from zero to this particular value which is vil your output voltage will be will be will be at high which is voh okay so it, it, this is what it says if your input voltage lies in the range of 0 to VIL or VIL could be let's say one fourth of VDD so whenever your input voltage lies in this range whenever your input voltage which you are providing over here it lies somewhere between 0 and VIL it, it, it should not be exactly equal to 0 if it lies in this range 0 and VIL you expect your output to be high which is VDD or which is VOH will come to more uh, more, more practical way of representing VOH but it says that the graph says that if your input voltage lies somewhere over here your output is high that's what the uh, uh, very uh, very basic thing to infer from this particular gra graph this is about the input low voltage and there is one more thing there is something called as VIH so VIH says that any voltage at the input level at the input if there is any voltage which lies above VIH and VDD your output is expected to be low your output is expected to be VOL okay so this is what we uh, this is uh, this is a thing that has to be inferred from this particular graph so what we'll do is we'll we'll look uh, we'll revise this once more and since i'm already running out of time what we'll do we'll take this up in the next video and also talk about this and try to infer the values or infer the formulas for noise margin in the next video thank you